What's up everyone, it's Ryan here from Green Tech Network. Today I'm going to be doing another one of my circuit seminar videos. In this video I'll be explaining in detail and assembling a 4-bit electronic clock. You can see the kit here. It's a relatively common kit that you can get on eBay or banggood.com or pretty much any online retailer. I sell for anywhere around two to three dollars, so pretty cheap and you know decent experience for soldering and also learning how um, electronics work. So I'll be going over the parts first. You can see I already took the components out of the bag. And so we have here, I'll show you the printed circuit board first. So it's got some pretty crisp printing which is nice, relatively thick board, and the traces seem pretty um, nice as well. That's pretty much it for the board. We have obviously the um, little display. I believe it's uh, the color's red. It's a 10-pin connection, and that just uh, goes right on the board there, as you can see. So this entire circuit's based off of this microcontroller. It's the Atmel AT89C2051. And I'll put the data sheet to this in the description, but basically just you know a standard Atmel microcontroller. Uh, it probably has some sort of pre-flashed program on it that runs the clock. You've also got here a little speaker. The clock does have two alarm functions apparently, according to the description online. So I assume this is for when you want to have the alarm go off. Um, I've got some resistors, some capacitors, both ceramic and uh, one electrolytic capacitor. Uh, I've got a little contact kind of block thing which I assume is for the uh, power supply. This does run anywhere between three to six volts so most people will probably be using five volts. Uh, this is one of those quick disconnect things for the microcontroller. Now, this is interesting. I've never seen one of these before. This is apparently some sort of 1K resistor, but it's packaged for the LED uh, display, I believe. And I'm not ex exactly sure how this works. I've never seen one of these before. But it's basically a bunch of um, 1K resistors, I think, inside that uh, help to make sure that the LEDs on the display don't get too much power. And then we have here a 12 megahertz oscillator which I believe is for the microcontroller to determine um, or to keep track of time basically and we've got a little transistor here along with so two push buttons so not, not a very complicated uh, a large amount of parts. So we can see here, this is a view of the circuit. So we've got here, this is the microcontroller right here. So you can see all the uh, inputs and outputs along with that strange 1K resistor thing I was talking about. And then here's the display. So you can see the pins on the 1K resistor, so it's 1 through 9 match up with a lot of these, so you see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all that match up with the A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the display. So I assume it's for making sure that the LEDs don't get too much power. I'm not really sure though. Uh, the speaker is connecting to that transistor, so I believe it's probably you know acts just as a um, on-off switch for turning the little speaker off or on. And then we've got what looks like some bypass capacitors, um, some of the push buttons for the inputs it looks like, and maybe another filtering capacitor, I'm not really sure. I haven't looked too much at the uh, circuitry. So obviously you can see a lot of this is in Chinese. Uh, on the back gives you a quick little list of what you get. However, some of the, or about half of the words are in Chinese. So. A little difficult to tell exactly what you're supposed to get in the kit. You can read some of it. Well, that's pretty much it. 
So I'm hoping that there's enough documentation on the board itself that I won't need to look up some um, uh, external uh, instructions. So that pretty much is the explanation of how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and start soldering it. Okay, I'm all ready to solder. I'll pretty much be uh, soldering off camera since I don't want to use too much of my camera's memory. But I'll explain which parts I'm soldering at each uh, break. And if there's anything that stands out that might be confusing for people who are new to soldering, I'll be sure to explain that in detail uh, as I go along. So when, you, when you're soldering, you usually want to start with the smallest components first. So I'll be probably starting with these two resistors and most likely the oscillator. So I'm going to go ahead and solder those right now. Okay, I've got the two resistors and the oscillator on. Uh, nothing really complicated about that. The resistors are the same exact uh, resistance, so put either one in R1 or R2. So now I'm probably going to go on to the push buttons and probably the quick disconnect block for the microcontroller. You do want to make sure that you match up the little indentation where the microcontroller goes. You want to match up the indentation for the quick disconnect block, which you can see up top. So you want it to be oriented in that direction, so the little indents match correctly. Alrighty, I finished up the push buttons and the quick disconnect kind of harness thing for the microcontroller. So now I'm going to go ahead and do all the capacitors. So you can see here the electrolytic capacitor. You always want to make sure with those that you have the positive on the side without the white stripe. So you see the white stripe on the capacitor and you see the positive side on the board. You don't want those to be on the same side because if you do then they'll blow. The ceramic capacitors on the other hand don't have a positive or negative or a anode cathode side. So those you can orient uh, whichever direction you want. Just to pay attention, so this one says um, 104. You want to put that one, uh, which is 10 to the 4, uh, over here, where it also says 104. And then the two little ones that say 30 on them, there should be two of them, you want to put those on the portion of the board that says 30 picofarads, which is there and there. Okay, I finished up the capacitors, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the speaker and um, also the transistor and the contact block. So with the speaker, you want to make sure that the positive sign on it, which you can see up there, matches with the positive sign on the board, which is going to be just like that. And then the contact block, you want to make sure that's facing uh, outwards just so you can access it and the transistor you want with the flat side so if you look at it head on like that you can see there's a flat edge right here you want the flat edge to match up with the flat edge on the printed circuit board if I can get it to focus there we go so you're gonna have it basically facing in this direction just like that so I'm gonna go ahead and solder those three components real quick all right, got all that soldered on. The contact blocks were a little bit hard. They have some thicker, um, I guess, uh, through mount uh, little metal pieces that you have to solder onto, so they tend to take a little bit to heat up, uh, specifically the um, negative side because there's a lot of traces coming out, so it dissipates some of the heat. But it's pretty straightforward, so now I'm just going to go ahead and finish soldering in the display and that 1K resistor bar thing. You want to have this display oriented so you see the dot down there, that means that's the bottom right. So you want the dot in the bottom right to match up with that one. So, just like that. Alright, so there you have it. The completed board itself. You can see that's the uh, back. So I need to trim these pins. I forgot to trim them before I turned on my camera. But that's pretty much it. You'll notice that these pins right here in the center are a little close 
but it's not that big of a deal because they are connected uh, vertically you can see through the uh, traces there it's not a huge deal but that's pretty much it so I'm gonna go ahead and now connect this to a DC power supply and see what um, I'm not exactly sure what these push buttons do but I guess we'll go ahead and find that out Alright, so I finished the clock and have it powered up and I've been messing around with it a bit trying to figure out what all the settings are. So we got here on the left, this is just a DC to DC step down converter. So you can see the clock is pulling 0.04 to 0.05 amps at around 5 volts. So it's consuming around 0.25 watts or uh, 250 milliwatts. So not a very high power consumption, which is nice. I have a video of this on my channel if you want to check it out. It's like 6 bucks for the kit. Pretty, pretty nifty little thing if you don't have a DC um, power supply. So this is the clock itself. So we've got your hours. This is a 24 hour clock, so it's not 12 hours, so it's 0 to 23, and then minutes. So this it actually isn't <laughs> 3.55 in the morning here. I've just been messing around with it. But if you press the right button, uh, that brings you from hours and minutes to minutes and seconds, which is pretty cool. So you can get it down to the second of accuracy. So if you want to get it within, you know, plus or minus one second accuracy of your local time, what you do is you press and hold the right hand button when you're in the minutes and seconds option, wait for your local time to hit exactly, let's say, you know, 3.55 and zero seconds, and then press the right button again, and then it goes back to the hours and minutes, and it started the, uh, the seconds right when you press that button. So you can get pretty high accuracy um, with your local time. So to uh, access the settings menu, you hold down this left button for a little bit. Uh, you see the screen flickers like that every once in a while? Not really sure why. Um, but anyway, so setting the number A is the local hours. So you press the right button to cycle through. So let's say when we set to uh, 8 in the morning. And then B is your local minute. So let's say it's 8.55 a.m. So C, option C, is a big mystery. I haven't been able to figure out what it does, but it has an on option and an off option, and it's not the alarms, because the alarms are setting D and G, I believe. My theory is maybe that it's the, if you want to have the sound go off with the alarm, I'm not really sure, and I haven't been able to figure it out, but I'm hoping by the time I publish this video that I'll be able to go online and maybe do some extra research. Uh, but anyways, moving on. So option D is the uh, alarm number one. So this has two alarms total. So it says D and then alarm is off. So if we press the right button, we want to turn the alarm on and then move on to the next option. So this is the hour of the first alarm. So let's say we went on the 18th hour and the uh, 45th minute, so F is the minute of that first alarm. And then G is your second alarm. So what's cool is you'd think, so let's say if we leave this alarm off, there's still obviously um, two options after G. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you have an H and an I. However, if you turn the alarm off, it skips those, which is kind of nice. So if you have the alarm off, you don't even have to worry about going through the hour and minute settings for that alarm if it's off. So if we go if we go back to alarm G or alarm number two basically. So if we turn this on, now we have the option to change the hour and the minute for that alarm, which is pretty neat. So if you have both all your alarms off then you basically have a pretty small menu option. So if you're kind of confused with that, turn on option D and G, and it'll give you um, more options to go through. There isn't really much else to this. Um, supposedly, it keeps accuracy within plus or minus one second. It can lose or gain uh, every other day, I believe. So after a month, you might have gained or lost, you know, 15 or so seconds. So it might need to be readjusted if you're looking for something very, very accurate. And this is pretty nice if you're looking for a low current um, application or a low power consumption application. Definitely not the lowest power consumption application you can use, but um, 
relatively low if you're plugging into a wall. If you're doing it for a portable, um, you know, 0.25 watts might be a little, little uh, too much power consumption if you're looking for long term. But there were two things I did not mention in the soldering, I forgot to mention. So if you look at the push buttons here, you want to mount these so that the leads are on the right and left if you're holding it this way. I mounted them so the leads were up and down as I wasn't paying attention and the clock would just freak out when you turned it on. So make sure your leads are on the right and the left when you're holding an instruction. The other thing, I can't really get a good angle. I guess I can turn it this way. So that little resistor bar in there, that's got a um, little marking in one of the upper uh, corners. You want to orient that little marking so it's facing you this direction and it's in the upper left hand corner. It's going to be in this corner when you solder it. And that was something I believe I forgot to mention in the video as well. But I mean that's pretty much it for this clock. Hopefully by the time I publish this video I'll be able to figure out what option C is. Um, I was hoping that it would allow you to turn off the beeping every time you press the button because it does get kind of annoying when you're going through the menu option because the beeping's pretty darn loud. Uh, which is nice for the alarm functionality, obviously, because it'll alert you relatively far away or wake you up or whatever you plan on using it for. However, when you're going through the menu option, listening to the thing beep gets kind of annoying because it's so loud. There is a little sticker you can leave on top of it, um, which would I can't remember where I put the sticker. Wish I kept it because the beeping does get annoying. But that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, you know, it's only two or three bucks pretty solid build quality and it's a great kit to you know learn some additional soldering and also learn a bit a little bit more about electronics but that concludes the video for this little do-it-yourself kit thank you for watching